Tonight, Google's building a Trans-Pacific Cable to Japan. The White House launches the U.S. Digital Service. And Microsoft announces a big event in September. Might be a selfie phone. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 148 for Monday, August 11th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy delicious treats like maple habanero pretzel pops. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right into today's tech feed. Google has announced it's backing a plan to both build and operate a new high-speed internet trans-Pacific cable system dubbed FASTER by the second quarter of 2016. FASTER is a $300 million project and will feature high-quality six-fiber pair cable and optical transmission technologies. Capacity is expected to start at 60 terabytes per second. If you break it down, that's about 100 gigabytes times 100 wavelengths times six fiber pairs. And connect the U.S. with two locations in Japan at Chikura and Shima. Faster will also feature connectivity to neighboring cable systems and extend the capacity beyond Japan to other Asian countries. Connections in the U.S. will extend the system to major West Coast hubs, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. Faster will also be managed by China Mobile International, China Telecom Global, Global Transit, KDDI, and Singtel. NEC will be the system supplier. Today, the White House announced it's formally launching a new U.S. digital service and has hired Mikey Dickerson to lead it. You might remember Dickerson is former site liability manager for Google and an engineer credited for his work helping salvage healthcare.gov after its initial mess of a launch. I guess that's how you would put it. The White House has dubbed the project USDS. And in testimony before the Senate's Homeland Security Committee back in May, Federal Chief Information Officer Steve Van Roykel called it a, quote, centralized world-class capability made up of our country's brightest digital talent and charged with removing barriers to exceptional government service delivery and remaking the digital experiences that citizens and businesses have with their government. He even says the ambition is to delight the customer. Okay. CBS CEO Les Moonves said it is in the company's most recent earnings call that CBS Studios is currently developing original TV series with streaming video services in mind. Moonves didn't go into too many details regarding which services CBS might be working with, but he did say that the network plans to produce, quote, more and more shows for more and more outlets. CBS already has a licensing agreement with Amazon, which allows the retailer to stream new episodes of CBS's sci-fi show Extant four days after it broadcasts on CBS. But the new developments indicate that the network might be producing shows that will air solely on streaming services rather than the TV first streaming second model it incorporates now. Microsoft will address nine bugs, two that are critical in this month's Patch Tuesday. The first critical vulnerability involves IE version 6 through 11, and the other involves a graphics-related exploit in Windows that could allow an attacker to trick a user into opening a malicious file. Windows 8.1 users won't receive the fixes unless they've installed Windows 8.1 update, after which they'll receive the first update under the new policy that the company has. Instead of releasing new features every few years in big updates, it now increasingly launches new Windows capabilities in monthly updates like it does for security patches. The company is rumored to be ready in the next version of Windows, which is codenamed Threshold and might be called Windows 9 when it hits the market. Speaking of Windows, remember all those Mac versus PC wars? Everybody had a side. Microsoft is trying to bring it back anyway with a round of new ads that are pitting the Surface Pro 3 against Apple's MacBook Air. There are three 30-second spots in total, and they all center on the touchscreen and pen benefits of the Surface Pro 3 over the MacBook Air. Microsoft's original Surface Pro 3 ads focused on the features of the latest tablet, laptop hybrid, with the tagline of the tablet that can replace your laptop. The Surface Pro 3 is launching in 25 new countries on August 28th. In a weakening PC market, tablet chips are still really big business, which is why the delay of Intel's new Broadwell chip architecture and the company's new 14 nanometer manufacturing process has been a 
bit tough for industry giants from Microsoft to Dell to Apple, all of which depend on Intel's progress for their own products. Broadwell chips are finally expected later this year and into early 2015. Intel isn't giving out really specific performance or power consumption numbers for the new processors just yet, but it does say that they can deliver twice the performance per watt in 14 nanometer Broadwell Core M chips as it could with 22 nanometer Haswell Y series chips which gives PC OEMs more flexibility with performance and size, and certainly battery life increases as well. Coming up, what happens when great white sharks attack a underwater vehicle? I think you might know. And up next, I'm going to chat with Ina Fried from Recode about Microsoft's just announced September event and what might be unveiled. But first, let's talk about food. Let's all, let's all just have more snacks. Doesn't that sound good? I mean, you think, oh, if I snack more, then, you know, I'm going to gain weight and I'm going to be unhealthy and that does, goes, goes against everything I'm supposed to do. Not if you're snacking smart, which is what you do with NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, never anything artificial, and they'll send great tasting snacks to your door, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Just go to naturebox.com and click the continue button and then choose your subscription option. Eh, once a month, once a week, whatever, whatever makes the most sense for you. And place your order by dietary needs and what you think tastes good. Maybe you're soy free. Maybe you're, you know, you've got a gluten issue. Maybe you like savory. Maybe you like sweet. You can snack guilt free on PB and J granola. It's really good. You can go uh, maybe bruschetta pretzel pops. Over 100 healthy snacks to choose from. Lots of flavors. I feel like I've tried them all, and yet we keep getting Nature Box here at Twit, and then there's something I've never had before. I had some kettle corn today that was really, really good. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is Ina Fried, Senior Editor over at Recode. Hey, Ina. Hey there, how's it going? It's going really well. Thanks for coming back on the show. Absolutely. So you uh, you got a media invite to a September 14th, uh, a September 4th rather, event in Berlin that Microsoft uh, is putting together. Uh, speculation, this is the Lumia 730, otherwise known as the selfie phone. What well, is I'm hearing, I'm hearing it could be more than one device. So okay. I expect at least two. So what's, uh, but, yeah, what, what, uh, what are the details here that you know? Well, I think, you know, Microsoft, ha there's a lot of eyes on it. So these will be the first really big launches of new phones since uh, the Nokia acquisition was completed. They've launched some other devices, but I think, um, and these were obviously in development before the acquisition was uh, completed, but I think people will be looking, what is Microsoft doing here? It's still an uphill battle. Uh, they're still trying to take on all of the Android ecosystem plus Apple, and that's still a tall order. Um, I think we'll see, again, an emphasis on photography. This is the one area where Microsoft on the hardware front really has something to offer um, that's arguably best in the world. You know, besides the fact that the term selfie is is a little played out, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of kind of a funny buzzword right now. Do you think that Microsoft really does put a lot of emphasis on a front facing camera, especially for you know, video conferencing and all all the all the things that actually can be done almost in an enterprise sense with a small device? Well, there's a few factors at play. One, as you say, they're an enterprise company. Two, they own Skype, and and making that payoff is is a big corporate um, objective. But I think also, you know, the front facing camera, it's just a natural place to put some new uh, innovation and hardware. Um, you can do this, you know, it's just a dollar cost. It's not that hard to do. So I think we're seeing this actually from a wide range of phone makers, particularly players that are kind of struggling to stand out from the pack. I think you're seeing this from some of the Chinese brands, uh, some of the folks saying, hey, you know, this is a this is low hanging fruit. Um, I don't think that's all we'll see from Microsoft. But I think the idea of better, better selfies is sort of a no brainer that I'd expect to uh, take off if it's successful for the first couple companies that try it. Uh, Recode also reported uh, last week uh, that uh, Apple event is shaping up for September 9th. Uh, widely expected to see at least one larger iPhone, perhaps more than one. I, you, know, you mentioned Chinese companies and, 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 and so many companies just kind of trying to see what sticks as far as the market goes and what's the, the perfect size. What else are we expecting this fall? 
Well, I think this is really going to be an interesting question for Apple and really for the industry in terms of, you know, how much innovation is there in smartphones? I think it has been kind of a slow year and we don't often say that in tech and certainly haven't said that for the last few years. But I think, you know, these phones increasingly, they look alike. Uh, no matter what phone you like, the one that you, you know, didn't buy doesn't look that different, um, at least uh, when they're turned off. You know, clearly on the software side, there's differences and people have their preferences. I think, um, you know, for Apple, they're catching up, which isn't something you say all the time, but they're catching up on the big screen trend. They were really big for many years on saying, look, the design we have, we think is the best to hold in the hand. And the market has really said, you know what? we can squeeze those fingers a little wider and we'd like a bigger screen. And I think we'll get that. I think Apple will also acknowledge that one size doesn't fit all. And this is really the first time that they've done that. And I think we'll see models in two different sizes. And I think that's also uh, a case where Apple has traditionally tried to say, we can find the one best phone that fits the entire market. And really the rest of their lineup has been variations on that theme. The 5C isn't really that much different than the iPhone 5, except for the colors. I think Apple is finally going to start taking a look at, you know, maybe this market is big enough for true multiple models. Today, Microsoft announced something that certainly stands out a bit, a $25 Nokia phone that does not connect to the Internet, not a smartphone. Uh, what what could possibly be the plan with this device? So um, Microsoft and Nokia before it have a really large business, like millions of phones a week. Uh, at the absolute entry level of the cell phone bit market. And this is actually a pretty darn big market. I mean, there's still a billion people that don't have a cell phone, and a lot of people's first cell phone is still a very basic model. Um, this isn't actually their cheapest. It's a $25 phone. They actually have one model that goes even a little bit lower. Um, but uh, this, this phone does show one interesting thing, which is that Microsoft's still interested in this market. They made it pretty clear they were getting out of the feature phones, so what's called ASHA Series 40. Um, and a lot of people, myself included, really thought they meant they were getting out of all of the low-end phone business. And Microsoft is really with this launch clarifying and saying, no, we actually think this basic phone business is a pretty good one and we're sticking it around. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll be really curious to see if a year from now they're singing the same tune. But for now, they're saying we're committed to this market for the long haul. Ina Freed is senior editor over at Recode. Thanks so much for joining us, Ina, and let folks Always. know where they can keep up with you. Uh, Recode.net uh, for myself and the great staff over here, or at Ina Freed if you want to uh, hear about softball, LGBT, tech news, all in one place uh, at Ina Freed's place to go. I follow her, and I think you should too. Thanks so much, Ina. Thanks. All right, finally, we mentioned sharks. It is Shark Week. Uh, this is a week that some people take very seriously. I'm still trying to figure that out. On Sunday, August 10th, the Discovery Channel and Massachusetts Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution published a video showing the institution's shark cam, which is a Remus 100 autonomous underwater vehicle. It's got six cameras. And the footage is interesting because it was being attacked by great white sharks, more than one. So six cameras facing front, rear, left, right, front up, and front down. The shark cam can capture the sharks pretty much from any direction and make it possible for scientists to study their behavior in detail never never available before. So the shark cam had been designed to withstand collisions with boats as well as scratches using a screwdriver and blunt force. But when the shark cam was recovered, it had some pretty severe bite marks in its paint after being attacked multiple times. How cute. Oh, aren't they nice? That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.